Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at biophotons, our essential need for a healthy community, our subsequent need for religion and spirituality, and I'm going to take a look at M. Scott Peck's four stages of spirituality. And I think I'm going to start with M. Scott Peck. For those not familiar with M. Scott Peck, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for a while for having a book on the number one selling list for like 10 years, <clears throat> The Road Less Travel. And in his book, Further Along the Road Less Travel, he talks about these four stages of spirituality that he based on Professor James Fowler's six stages of spiritual growth, where we're all at different levels of spirituality or spiritual growth. And M. Scott Peck condensed those down into four. According to Peck, the very first stage of spirituality, he labeled anti, anti, uh, uh, anti -so chaotic antisocial. Chaotic, boy, that's a big word. Chaotic antisocial. When I think of chaos, I immediately think of biophotons. Because biophotons means communication. And what do we have if we don't have communication? We have chaos. Chaotic antisocial. According to M. Scott Peck, people in stage one have an unharnessed will. These are the true thugs in our, in our society. These are the true murderers and rapists and you name it. These are the people doing bad things because they don't realize what they're doing. They have an unharnessed will. Their life is characterized by chaos. And many people, as a psychiatrist Peck pointed out, that when people in this stage come to terms or, or they realize what's going on, they many times kill themselves because they can't deal with the chaos. So. Stage one, chaotic antisocial, people with an unharnessed will, their life is chaotic, <clears throat> they have no order, they need some order, so that's how we get to stage two. And stage two is the formal institutionalized. And according to M. Scott Peck, <clears throat> who was a psychiatrist and spent some time as a prison psychiatrist, saw what happened when people who went from stage one, unharnessed will, into an institution like a prison. He goes, wow, look at these people. As long as they're in here, they're model citizens. They have order now in their life. They have an institution to give them some order and some rules. But as soon as they get out, they don't have that institution anymore. And they end up back in prison again. And he named other places or uh, things that could be considered an institution. A big corporation can give people that type of feeling, like IBM or whatever, I believe was his example. But he said most people who find an institution and get, have order in their life are people who attend church. These are the churchgoers. And he said many times when people go from stage one to stage two, they can actually tell you exactly when it happened, what day it was, what time it was, and that's when they were born again. That's when they finally got some order in their life and became a better citizen. Uh, so, we have chaotic antisocial stage one, we have formal institutionalized stage two, mostly people who are going to church and they need some sort of order in their life. Now these people, because they went from stage one to stage two, they can't handle any gray at all. Gray means chaos to them, it's got to be black or white, black or white, black or white. So when they read the Bible or any other spiritual document. They have to believe in, in, the, in the letter of it. They don't understand things metaphorically. Keep it in mind, as M. Scott Peck says, many of us are in different stages. We might have a toe in stage one, you know, a little bit in stage two left. Most of us are in stage three, which is the next stage. And that's what he called and labeled the uh, skeptic individual. Now, people in this stage would be your atheists and your agnostics. Many of you are scientific-minded people you know, they got to see the scientific studies to, to prove anything. Um, and many of these people actually were brought up with parents that were stage two. So they were brought up in a, a life that had good values. Religion teaches a lot of good things. They had good values, they had order, their parents weren't chaotic. And then usually when they reach adolescence, they start to question their parents' fuddy-duddy rules. Why do I have to believe in these fuddy-duddy rules? I'm a good person. I just don't believe this. So I'm going to be skeptical. Uh, I'm either going to be an atheist or an agnostic. Uh, of course, the atheist says there is no God. The agnostic, the agnostic 
rides the fence and goes, I don't know. <laughs> I could go either way. And I'll admit myself, growing up as a child, I had a hard time believing the Bible. I said, this doesn't make sense. I have a good sense of logic. Remember, I mentioned before that in eighth grade, they said, you've been given this gift. You can see the interconnectedness of things. I can look at a page full of numbers and turn them around and see the connectedness and everything and go, oh, E equals MC squared. And this is just a gift. I didn't have to do anything to get it. I just have it. And that's why I know I've been destined ever since they told me that in eighth grade to do something with that gift, to help people. But the point I'm making here is when, I was, when they told me that, that's when I went from an atheist to an agnostic and I realized, hey, come on, man. I haven't studied both sides well enough to, to say no. I just know that part of the story I've been fed is bullshit. I can read bullshit as a kind. Most children can read bullshit. You know, a little, little five-year-old kid goes, well, where did God come from? <laughs> whoa, wait a second. God created everything. Where did the person, that, whoa, what, that, I mean, that's an ever-ending question, isn't it? This is why I don't mind walking the fence about something as profound as where did everything come from? My God, if you think you know, mercy, mercy, what can I say? Congratulations. Uh, I wish I had that much confidence in things that no one else had, has a clue to, but, but congratulations. So what happens? You're in stage three, and, uh, and if you're in stage three, you get really offended by people in stage two because... People in stage two think you're in stage one and you need to be saved. You're an evil person like I used to be. <laughs> Not necessarily now. People just, they need more order in their life is all. Remember, we live in a sick world. Religion and spirituality are subsequent needs because we're sick and disconnected. So these help us deal with being in hell. And there's so many good things about this. Please don't think I'm ever saying anything negative about religion and spirituality. As long as we're collectively disconnected, we need these things to help some of us. Not all of us need them, but it can help a lot of us. So what happens during stage three, long enough, what eventually happens to you, if you're observant, is you start paying attention, you start looking at everything, and instead of looking at how everything is different, you start seeing, well, wait a second, there's more commonality in everything. Everywhere I look, I see the commonality in everything. And if you do that long enough, you slowly creep into that fourth stage, which is the mystical communal. Well, you understand all is one. And I know I started that stage early on in life. I know I went from an atheist to an agnostic when I was uh, 13. And, but again, I've always had this gift to see the interconnectedness and things. So I think from a very early time, I've always had this mystical communal sense to myself. And when people do go to four stage, they, they normally say, well, it happened like in the, somewhere in the early 90s maybe. Uh, as opposed to 11 a.m. on Tuesday, uh, April the 6th, <laughs> born again. Yeehaw! And interesting side note, by the way, uh, Arnold Eric said when he went to Palestine, and he died back in 1925, so when he went to Palestine a long time ago, and he talked to everybody over there, he said, the Bible doesn't, it doesn't coincide with what these people are saying from customs and religions. And he explains how, what is it, John chapter 3, verse 5. Boy, I should have looked that up before I came here. I think that's what it is where it states about being born again. And Eric points out, this is talking about water fasting. That's how you become born again. Makes sense to me. How do you get born again? You gotta get rid of that serpent. <laughs> Don't you see? Don't you see? And again, if you look at that phrase, he talks about uh, spiro and water. Spiro is another word for air. So basically what it's saying to be born again is to embrace water fasting. Interesting concept. However, the water fasting doesn't address the biophotons, which I'm going to come to in a moment. So we got M. Scott Peck's four stages of spirituality, stages two and stages four. All the great books are written for these two people. They both appreciate what's written, but the people in stage four look at things more metaphorically, where the people in stage two can't do that. It's got to be black and white. Can't have chaos. So... Interesting concept that we go through these stages and he even related them to our ages like when we're little kids You know, we're in that little stage and then we finally go into adolescence and we become rebellious and etc. Etc um, But again, it's it's an interesting perspective, but it's limiting so And I say it's limited because because where do the psychopaths fit into this equation? Well, interestingly, I guess you could say psychopaths are like stage one day they are the bad people, but their lives aren't chaotic they're smart people. They're ruling the world. 
they just don't have any empathy. And they, are, and, they don't, and they don't worship God, they worship Lucifer, they worship Satan. And what's interesting, as I said before, psychopaths are con artists, they're magicians. And when you look at the tree of life that goes from one to 10, where 10 is God, guess what the Satanists do? They get to nine, they stop, and they skip to 11, which is the magicians, and that's the symbolism behind 9-11. <laughs> Think about that one. When you stop at 9 and you, and you skip God and you go to 11, you become the magician. I'm telling you right now, in order to understand everything on this planet, you have to realize who's in control. And I've said it many times, they're psychopaths. Study what a psychopath is. Watch Defense Against the Psychopath. You'll see their ammo. You'll see they have no empathy. You see they divide and conquer. You see that they are habitual liars, so they all are the ultimate con artist. And they're magicians. They're tricking and fooling everybody. That's all you have to do to rule the world. Misdirect all the so-called experts. Get them to take the first step in the wrong direction. They'll never find the solution. As long as the vast majority of us rely on our experts and think they're the experts, we're in bad shape. We live at a time of specialization. We no longer make our own shoes and do all the things we need. We got specialists to do that. It's impossible in this complicated civilization of ours to be able to know enough about to be your own doctor. Or do you? No, it's easy to be your own doctor because most of what we got that doctors are treating are things we're doing. We are our own doctor. We've got to take responsibility and realize that our actions have consequences. If we don't like what we got, maybe we should look at what we're doing. But no, our experts say, it's not your fault, it's a medical condition. Don't blame the greasy fries, blame biology. Your disease is due to an inappropriate signal. Negate the law of cause and effect that doesn't apply for when your body is fucked up and, and giving you a bad signal. Well, we do get a bad signal when we build a tolerance to our mistakes and we derive pleasure from making a mistake. But otherwise, that disease is going to manifest eventually. And when it does, that's part of our feedback system. Disease is part of our feedback system. Don't treat it. Be your own doctor. Realize the role that biophotons play. As Dr. Pop proved, all living systems store the sunlight energy in the nucleus of their cells. It's coherent sunlight energy so it can communicate. The more they have, the healthier they are. And most importantly, it's the most important thing we need for one of our essential needs, which is our essential need for a healthy community. And I label that piece 30 in a special teaching tool I created to help show where all the pieces of the puzzle fit. You can go down below in the description box and watch the ultimate schematic. I have a very simple tool that's based on three stages of knowledge and what Socrates called the problems of knowledge. I'm using knowledge uh, and presenting it in a way that's never been seen before. It should revolutionize the way we teach everything to everybody. A little child can understand this. If they know how to play two square, they can understand this. Because when you look at three stages of knowledge, these are just two sequential ordered pairs. Does that sound complicated? It shouldn't be. Because A and B and B and C are two sequential ordered pairs, and they can be interconnected and form ABC. It's just like one and two and two and three are two sequential ordered pairs, and they can be combined to one, two, three. Those are the three stages of knowledge. Every seven-year-old child knows uh, their ABCs, and they can count backwards from, from three and go three, two, one. And that's what we got to do. Three, what we manifest, diseases. Two, what are we doing? Eating the wrong food. One, knowledge bombarded with bullshit. You see? That's how we start our journey off in life. So. The piece I'm talking about now is up in the plus A box. I'm going to go up here. Plus A box of knowledge. First stage, second stage, third stage. In the plus A box, that's where we have knowledge. That's where we have 12 essential needs and two additional temporary needs. I label those pieces 22 to 35. And piece 30 is the piece I want to talk about in this video. That's our need for a healthy community. And I find it interesting that when I labeled that piece, I didn't want to call it spirituality because I thought, oh my God, I got to make my message appeal to everybody. If I say spirituality, people who are religious are going to go, oh, he's new age. Oh, and then the atheists are going, oh my God, he's religious. It's spiritual. And I thought I was using the word community in lieu of spirituality until I realized, no, spirituality is no different than religion. They're both subsequent needs because we don't have enough biophotons to fill one with everything. 
We shouldn't have to think about this. Having a healthy community is not something we think about. It's, 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 it's acting the right way. Don't destroy the biophotons. And then we feel one because the sunlight energy is coherent. Sunlight energy is how cells communicate. Remember, without communication, we have chaos. We've got too many people in stage one committing too many crimes. What's the solution? Do we get them to stage two? Do we get them to thump that Bible? Do we get them to go into spirituality? Or do we just simply get them reconnected? That's the solution. It's so simple. Just get reconnected. And when we do that, we can then individually satisfy piece 30. That becomes 69 in the second stage. So up here, piece 30, one of our needs, if we satisfy, we make it to the second stage of knowledge on the right path, playing in paradise. And that's where piece 69 comes into play. But we're not doing that, so we end up down here in the, the negative B box of mistakes, and we have <clears throat> piece 89, hypoheliosis when it gets into the third stage of knowledge, 103.89. 103 are problems within our control, and then depend upon which of our, our essential needs we're not satisfying, it's point something, like in this case it's 0.89. So hypoheliosis is 103.89, it's because we're not satisfying our essential need for a healthy community, and we're down here uh, in piece 89. Now, I've mentioned before, we can bump up our own biophotons and get rid of hypoheliosis A, which is on an individual level. But the vast majority of us are disconnected, so we're always going to suffer from hypoheliosis B on a collective level. So that's the problem we face. It's impossible right now for anyone to satisfy all their essential needs because we have a need for a healthy community. We're sick. We're disconnected. Why do you think I'm so motivated to get you guys to change? I want to satisfy my needs. In, the, in no man's an island, we can't do it unless we all get reconnected. That's why the ultimate solution to solve every problem that's 100% within our control will not work unless all of us do it. And most of us can't even wrap our brain around it until we do the first of my three-step process so we can bump up those biophotons so we can flush out that serpent so we can be born again and get reconnected and get rid of hypoheliosis A. And then if enough of us can reach the tipping point, Within a short period of time, we'll get rid of hypoheliosis B. And when we do that, we'll turn the hell we created in the dark ages back into the golden age we had a long time ago. You have to understand that I'm just not making a reference to the Bible and I had someone go, oh, you just don't know anything, John. You know, you're referring back to the Bible. No, I'm not I'm referring to everything. Every culture on this planet talks about a golden age. They all talk about doing something and now we have the Dark Ages. Every one of them talk about it. What was it? That's the missing piece. Why? People who rule the world don't want us to know that piece. And what is that piece? we got to stop cooking our food, you fools. You cookies. I was a cookie at one time. I understand the addiction. There's only one way to deal with addictions. That's the test and ideas time has come. So go down below in the description box. And you can watch the ultimate schematic and see how all the pieces fit together if you're that type of person. If not, and you need some more motivation, listen to Dr. Roba when he's on day 21 of a solid food vacation. Watch the Deborah Duncan show and you can see women get rid of varicose veins and bunions and gout and fibromyalgia and improve their athletic performance. And then you can go to my seminar and you can be the change which we need to see. You can play your role by getting reconnected. And again, if enough of us can do this, we'll get everyone's attention. And we can get rid of what I believe is the most dangerous disease and the most common disease ever since the fall of mankind. And I coined that condition hypoheliosis, an abnormally low biophoton level. Remember what Dr. Fritz Albert Pop said about the health of every living system and those biophoton levels. The more they had, the healthier they were, the less they had, the sicker they were. Now, Dr. Pop coined that word by photons back in 1976. Bio is life, photon is light. Invented an instrument in 1974. He's been studying this over four decades. Why don't we all know about it? Because this is the only biomarker we should identify. If we forgot all the other biomarkers and just looked at our biophoton levels and then in, had one law, we all had to have a minimal level, had to eat those raw fruits and vegetables, a certain amount, who knows what it is, we could transform our, our planet. 
We could be all playing in paradise, which is simply a place where we don't have problems that are within our control. We can go back to the Garden of Eden, so to speak. But remember, in stage four, we're speaking metaphorically. I'm not in stage two, speaking the letter of the Bible. I understand mysticism. I understand the oneness of everything. I understand I'm connected to you guys. I feel your pain. I don't like it. And I want to put an end to it. And I know you do too. You just, most of us lack the knowledge. But more and more people are finding it. And it's our job to share it. So get excited. If you haven't done this yet, it's time to do it. Or maybe not. You know when it's time. Most importantly, it's time to share this message. On the hero's journey, the most important part is when you get to share the message. That's when it gets to be fun. It's one thing to experience this joy for ourselves, but there's nothing like sharing it with other people. You have no idea how full my life is. Getting the feedback that I get from you guys, thank you, thank you, I got a really good feedback again this morning. It, it, it's, it's what fuels me. You guys are fueling me, thank you. I'm trying to ignite you guys and you're doing it right back at me. It gives me faith that we have a chance. So, it's time to get excited. It's time to do something you haven't done before or again, but this time let's go the distance. And remember, when you do it, you're in for a treat.